To record a macro, you need to have the developer tab displayed. And I've got it displayed there. Now, by default, the developer tab actually isn't displayed. So in this version of Office, you can right click on the ribbon and you can go to customize the ribbon. And over here, this shows us what we've currently got on the ribbon. So by default, the developer tab isn't ticked. So I'm going to bring it back on the customize the ribbon, developer tab, click OK. Now I've got the developer tab displayed. I go over to record new macro and I need to give the macro a name. So I'm going to call this one A4 portrait because that is really what the macro is doing. So it's a good descriptive name. Now, macro names must start with a letter, so they can't start with a number or other character, and they cannot have spaces in the name. If I want to assign this macro a shortcut key to run it, I can do. So I could go to here and I could say, for example, the letter A. So to run this macro, the user presses Control and A. The problem with that is that most of the letters have already been used up by built-in shortcuts, like Control and A is to select all cells, Control and B is for bold, and so on. So I tend to try and keep away from using the letters. What you can do is you can make it a capital A, and then to run the macro, it's Control and Shift and A. Um, and I don't think that's actually been used up by anything. But I'm going to leave the shortcut off at this point. And then I have to decide where to store the macro. Now, I'll talk about the personal macro um, workbook in a while. But for now, we've got two choices, new workbook and this workbook. New workbook, I don't see any point in doing that because you might as well just start a new file and record the macro into there. But this workbook, that is where we're going to put this macro. And to be honest, I would say 90% of your macros are going to be stored in this workbook because the macros are usually going to be specific to the current file. So I've chosen this workbook and I will click on OK. And at this point, I am now recording. Down here at the bottom, there's what looks like a little white square. It's actually like the stop button on a, I knew I used to say tape recorder, but uh, I suppose DVD recorder these days. And uh, so that is a quick way to actually stop the recording. And that also indicates we are currently recording. I can also stop the recording just by clicking the stop recording button on the developer tab. So I'm now recording and everything I do will be recorded, which means I need to go to page layout, choose orientation, portrait and size A4. As it happens, it was already set up to that, but it doesn't matter because it still records those actions. And then that's all I'm doing. A very quick macro. I can then just uh, stop the recording and I'll do it from down here. And that has stopped the recording.